The hardest thing to do as a pastor is say good evening. Because <laughs> I'm trained to stand here and say good morning. So good evening, good afternoon. It is a joy to have each one of you here with us. My name is Rick Hamilton and I am the pastor here at the First Christian Church of Downers Grove. I'm glad you found us. I'm glad you survived the journey. And I am most glad that you chose to make the journey. As we gather for worship, we do so in the glory and protection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Something I have absolute confidence we yes. share complete confidence in. I also remind you that we are surrounded when we worship in this place by reminders of in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty, and in all things, in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty, and in all things, love. Oh, thank you. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin our time of worship. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the privilege of coming together in this place to celebrate a forward move of our region. We give you thanks for its ministries and those who have been called out to serve. Guide and direct our hearts, our minds, our words, and our deeds, that we may be faithful to your call to experience in all things love. Help us to know your love in this evening as we show you our love for you in worship and praise. Thanks be to you for all good gifts. Amen. Amen. That wasn't my job. Okay. Please join in the call to worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together from near and far. We yes. gather as one body to worship God. We are Christ's body. We, we depend upon one another. We praise God for our unity. The Holy Spirit blesses the church with many gifts. We, we come in celebration and offer our gifts with thanksgiving. We come together in Christ's love. Please join in our invocation. Holy, Holy One, we gather today to welcome Angie and Eli into our region. We ask your blessings upon our partnership and ministry. Grant us vision and mission, unity in our diversity, and patience with perseverance. May we discern together your way and let us love and be strong. with us. 
And it's in that spirit that we have asked you, Angie and Eli, to bring with you an empty bag. The bags that you will take with you into ministry. If you would bring your bags and come forward at this time, stand right here behind the communion table. And then those of you who have been given gifts to present, please come forward at this time as well. We have some gifts for you. <coughs> signs of the office that you now take and signs that you do not undertake this work alone. Signs of the hopes that we have for your ministry and signs that we as a community are committed to working alongside you. So if the first presenter would present the first day, we begin with the Bible so that your ministry might reflect the good news that it contains. Amen. Amen. We offer you the books of prayers because our lives of faith are always lived in conversation with God.
Well, what a blessing it is that we have so many different gifts. My grandma used to say, um, it takes all kinds of people to make the world work the way that God wanted it to work. But with all of our gifts, we are woven together with one spirit of God's love. So I'm going to teach you the song written by a friend of mine. You can um, flip in your books if you want to see the melody of the purple books under your chairs on page 151, and the words will also be on the screen. I invite you to sing along or listen as the spirit moves you.
하나님을 아는 자는 우리의 말을 듣고 하나님께 속하지 아니한 자는 우리의 말을 듣지 아니하니 진리의 영과 미혹의 영을 이로써 아느니라 I'm reading it verse 7 through 21 now 사랑하는 자들아 우리가 서로 사랑하자 사랑은 하나님께 속한 것이니 사랑하는 자마다 하나님께로 나서 하나님을 알고 사랑하지 아니하는 자는 하나님을 알지 못하나니 이는 하나님은 사랑이시니라 하나님의 사랑이 우리에게 이렇게 나타난 바 되었으니 하나님이 자기의 독생자를 세상에 보내심은 저로 저로 말미암아 우리를 살리려 하신 이니라 사랑은 여기 있으니 우리가 하나님을 사랑한 것이 아니요 오직 하나님이 우리를 사랑하사 우리 죄를 위하여 화목죄로 그 아들을 보내셨으니라 <웃음> 사랑하는 자들아 하나님이 이같이 우리를 사랑하셨은지 우리도 서로 사랑하는 것이 마땅하도다 어느 때나 하나님을 본 사람이 없으되 만일 우리가 서로 사랑하면 하나님이 우리 안에 거하시고 그의 사랑이 우리 안에 온전히 이루느니라 그의 성령을 우리에게 주심으로 우리가 그 안에 거하고 그가 우리 안에 거하시는 줄을 아느니라 아버지가 아들을 세상의 구주로 보내신 것을 우리가 보았고 또 증거하니 누구든지 예수를 하나님의 아들이라 신하면 하나님이 저 안에 거하시고 저도 하나님 안에 거하느니라 하나님이 우리를 사랑하시는 사랑을 우리가 알고 믿은 거니 하나님은 사랑이시라 사랑 안에 거하는 자는 하나님 안에 거하고 하나님도 그 안에 거하시느니라 이로써 사랑이 우리에게 온전히 이룬 것은 우리로 심판날에 담대함을 가지게 하려 함이니 주의 어떠하심과 같이 우리도 세상에서 그러하니라 사랑 안에 두려움이 없고 온전한 사랑이 두려움을 내어 쫓나니 두려움에는 형벌이 있음이라 두려워하는 자는 사랑 안에서 온전히 이루지 못하느니라 우리가 사랑함은 그가 먼저 우리를 사랑하셨으니라 누구든지 하나님을 사랑하노라 하고 그 형제를 미워하면 이는 거짓말하는 자니 보는 바그 형제를 사랑하지 않은 자가 보지 못하는 바 하나님을 사랑할 수가 없느니라 우리가 이 계명을 죽게 받았으니 하나님을 사랑하는 자는 또한 그 형제를 사랑할지어다 아멘 네. 
as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Amen. Wisconsin, I, I bring you greetings. It's good to lift the name of Jesus together in our congregations and communities. And just as a reminder, that is why we are here. Jesus. Amen. 2,000 plus years later, and it's still Jesus. Thank you. I'm going to do that. You're going to say that, okay? <laughs> I made my confession of faith in Jesus Christ. Um, this is a little scary for me. At First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Muskegon, Michigan, 48 years ago. It was deeply personal, but it was never meant for me alone. It was covenantal. It joined me to you, even though I never met some of you until eight years ago. It joined me to you. Eli and Angie have made their own confessions of faith not as many years ago. <laughs> In different communities who loved them and welcomed and encouraged and saw God's light in them, their families who are here among us today, and I'm going to ask them to introduce them in a little bit, but their families and their communities told both Angie and Eli that who they were and the things they thought and the gifts they bring, they belonged. They said, you are worthy. You are worthy because Jesus says so. You are worthy. Would you just do me a favor? Because I think we forget that. Would you turn to the people around you and tell them they are worthy because Jesus said so? It is a solid rock to carry her through whatever life brings. She learned from that reading from 1 John, which she picked for the service, that God is love. That's what it says. God is love, and our purpose in this life is to give and live that love, to make a difference in each other's lives. We are from God. We are from God. And what would God have us do? But love yes. one another. It's what Jesus would do, right? And I can tell you, just in the short time in which I've been able to be around Angie, Angie embodies that love. Not just in this moment of ministry, but Angie has embodied that love in her life and her work and her family. She learned 
to trust God in all things, and to listen for God's leading and follow the path which God has laid out for her that has brought her surprise here to us today. All because of Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Eli, Eli will tell you that faith in Jesus is about love and it's about justice and it's about inclusion and not just for all nations, of course for all nations. And also, Eli will tell you that it's about the quest. For those who search for God, for those who search for God, even groping for God, will find God. Even as God is already very near to us. No wonder you chose Acts 17 as your favorite scripture, Eli. Eli was welcomed as a young adult in a disciples congregation that honored his person, his dignity, his questing, his awesome wonder for the world and God's holiness, and this diverse and beloved community, his passion for art and ethics and justice, and by the way, computer science and faith <coughs> manifests in action. It is what brought him here to us today, all because of Jesus. There is a Jewish prayer that I used to quote at every wedding, but I haven't done weddings in eight years, and that's a terrible thing for me. <laughs> this regional ministry thing. Anyway, the, there is this prayer that says, praise God, praise the Creator for the wonder that we are here today doing this. Together in this moment, it is an acknowledgement, folks, that it could have been different than this. And yet, we are here today, in this moment, brought to you by God and prepared for us by Jesus in His name. I'm going to drink rest for a minute. <laughs> I have been reading a lot of documents because I happen to be called to be the chair of the governance committee of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ General Board. God help you all. <laughs> I know it sounds really exciting and it's definitely my spiritual gift, I gotta tell you. I know it sounds like, you know, this is not the most important thing in the world, but it, is, it has been very exciting for me to read this stuff because it tells the story about how we got here today. And it could have been different. I found myself laughing. I, I just, I'm reading this thing and suddenly I just burst out laughing. I read the conclusions of a panel of scholars, four white males, who met from 1957 to 1961, four years. This sounds like church, doesn't it? And they, they had this panel of scholars, and their first realization was the disciples do have a theological tradition. And I just burst out laughing. Eureka! We do think theologically. We're not so weird after all. It took a century of ministry and four years of a panel of scholars researching that to figure it out. What a relief. <laughs> and you know what they discovered is our theological tradition? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> The 19th century disciples quote slogan, no creed but Christ, was not anti-theological, but it itself is a theological assertion. Or as Newell Williams, disciple historian, wrote, disciples do not have one theology which all of us subscribe to. Yeah, well, that's going to happen. But we do have one faith. 
one faith that unites us, and that faith is Jesus, Jesus. the Christ, the Son of the living God, whom we confess as Lord and Savior of the world. Amen. Jesus. We disciples have Jesus. Perhaps many theologies and many gifts and many languages, thank you very much, Tom, and many practices, but it's one faith, one faith in Jesus. One table, who invites us here? Jesus. Not for ourselves alone. Not for ourselves alone. This one faith named Jesus. Binds us to one another in this one church, which you all know is much more than the disciples of Christ. This one church of Jesus, Christ universal. And that darn Jesus keeps ringing the dinner bell <laughs> and calling people to the table. Whether we think we have enough to share or not. Right? That's right. That's right. When you and I made our personal confessions of faith in Jesus Christ, it was much more than a personal thing. We became part of this one glorious church. I just wish you could stand up here and look at you <laughs> with me today. Look at you. We made our personal confession of faith and we became part of this one holy, wonderful, beautiful church. Confessing Jesus never meant for me, myself, alone, my own private, personal experience, my own little table over here in the corner by myself. Jesus calls us to embrace, serve, uphold those whom Jesus loves. My life, your life, we are joined in discipleship at this banquet table where all are welcomed as we were welcomed ourselves. And this is our good news. There is a saint of the church that once upon a time I had the privilege to meet. Actually, got sent out as a group of three people to a church that was really mad in the heart of the desert in Oregon. It was like having spears thrown at you, I just gotta say, verbal spears. But Ronald Osborne, Ronald Osborne, a church historian, a saint of the church, um, incredible man, he wrote these words. It is suggested that our disciples' covenantal declaration might include the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the relation of disciples to each other, openness to the Holy Spirit, unity and wholeness in the Church of Christ on earth, existence of the Church through baptism and participation in the Lord's Supper, God's gift within the Church of ministry and of Scripture, and our commitment to God and to each other. The covenant was not a test of fellowship or church membership, but it was instead a declaration of relationships in which we stand. And the gift that we receive by virtue of God's covenant with us through Jesus Christ. One faith. Jesus. One church. Look at each other. Look at each other. This is who you stand with. This is who you stand with. Declaring our relationship to Jesus and to one another. That panel I told you about from 1957 to 1961, by the way, that was the time in which I might have been born. <laughs> They also said this. The second advent was the recognition that, I'm going to put in some words that work for us. The second advent was the recognition that our theological tradition gave us freedom 
to disavow certain traditional formulations and develop new expressions in keeping with our present understandings of God's self-disclosure in Jesus Christ. In other words, God isn't finished with us yet, or this world yet, or doing new things yet. God is not done. And the blessing of being a disciple of Christ, we are always looking for the new way God is calling us right here, right now, today, with us. And you better believe we are called in Jesus' name. Because, folks, if you haven't noticed, there is work to do. That's right. And you are not called to do it alone. This is who you stand with. As you do the work in Rock Falls to feed the hungry in the community that you support and serve. And this is who you stand with as you serve Parkway Gardens community with summer youth ministries and job training and networking with local officials in order to bring life to that community and make it safe for everyone there so that they know the love of God through your church. This is who you stand with as you run an after school program for children and develop leaders and plant a community garden at Park Manor Christian Church so that folks in what might often be food deserts have the opportunity to have fresh produce for their families. And this is who you stand with at Jackson Boulevard Christian Church, where you run a program for kids to help them honor who they are, the dignity of being an African-American young person growing up in this world, being ready to move out and be a leader in this world for change and for justice and for Jesus. And this is who you stand with, Root and Branch and Gilead, Chicago, and a new, a new church here in the city when you go out to serve young people and bring together young adults and to, to bring them together so that they have a safe place to discover that they are worthy. Because who said so? Jesus. Thank you. And this is who you stand with in Villa Park and Arlington Heights, out in the suburbs, where you're trying to deal with suburban sprawl, and everybody thinks there's a whole lot of wealth around you, and there is. And there is, but there is also a need to love your neighbor as yourself. And this is who you stand with. This message of welcome and inclusion for LGBTIQ persons that's part of the DNA now of First Christian Church in Downers Grove and also making sure that 550 kids got back at Philippus. called regional church. This is who you stand with. Today, today, this moment, one faith in Jesus. Oh, he's got to hear it. Jesus. Today, one faith in Jesus. Today, one church, I stand with you. Will you answer the call and stand with each other? Let's stand. God, by your grace, you have called us to be your one church in the name of Jesus. May your blessing and your spirit rain down on all who are gathered here. May they know that your spirit connects us as one people in this one, one service of Jesus' name. Help us to remember who we stand with, Lord. Help us to remember. You are with us. Amen. Amen.
let us bow together as we lift our hearts in our prayer for Angie and Eva. Yes, would you guys come on to do it right there, sir? Yes. Let's gather around the If you don't mind. Jesus doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs>
more often than, than probably what, the, the, what we think. Every time we gather around the table, we're holding an installation celebration. Um, there's been a place that's been available for all of us. So when we're taking that place, we're participating in an installation. And just like Jesus set out a place for his disciples and gathered with them one night having dinner, and he grabbed the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, take this, my body broke it for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he lifted the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant. Whenever you drink from this, do this in remembrance of me. Dear Father God, we come before you, Father. We come to this table, Father God, with hearts of gratitude and love, Father. We pray for a blessing over these elements, Father God, that as we partake in this world and this world, Father, that we will be reminded of your death for the remission of our sins, Father God, and in the glorious hope of yours. Father God, as we take up this bread and this May it be your name for our lives, Father God. And we ask that your indwelling in the Holy Spirit, Father God, will continue to strengthen our souls. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Friends, let's gather around the table. Um, we'll be doing communion by intention, and I believe there are many things that will uh, direct you on the uh, outside of us. that didn't get covered. In the middle, where Ali's standing, is a oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Gluten-free in the middle. Gluten-free option in the middle. <laughs> Jesus, is the 
place to be a great time to be together. That's what we've done. And it's worth the trip. It's not out How many creepy uncles do we have right now? I think that's a passing comment. It's a distracting comment. Please go to our website, ccfwdisciples.org, and register for the regional assembly. Say, well, I don't want to go overnight. Just come down for Saturday. Be a part of the experience and acknowledge that we are built to be together, to work together, one part and another. The last announcement, and very quickly, is New Day for Transformation. We're having a spiritual retreat in Bloomington, September 14 and 15. It costs $25. That's how much the food is going to cost. You get the program for free. <laughs> A deeply spiritual experience. I promise you will love it. You'll see faces like these around that circle, but enrollment is limited to only 36 people, but we want you to be a part of that. It's in Bloomington, September 14, 15. And then November 3rd is a Thrive event. Would you like to become the people of welcome in your community? That's the workshop. Indicator, November 3rd, Ruth Fletcher, who's in the Idaho region as a regional minister, soon to retire, is going to be leading that. And she has led a number of these for us. This is a way to transform your congregation, to be more effective in reaching out to those who come your way. I say all of these to say, we are the body, and we, the regional church, making a huge investment to connect with Angie, with Eli, with Teresa and I, and with each of you, bringing gifts, blending gifts by the power of God's Spirit. Great days are ahead for us, and that's our final announcement. We're going to sing a song, my favorite hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Let's stand for this. You've been in the seat long enough. As we sing together, I invite you to climb into this song. Read yourself in this melody, knowing that it is a melody that has been sung over hilltops, at bedsides of people who are passing on, at the birth of babies. This is an ancient melody that dates all the way back to the 8th century, and poetry that is about 200 years old. Friends, we are not in this alone.